New York City, 1904 members of the New York Fire Department arrive at the Manhattan Adventurers Society in response to smoke coming from a chamber. The smoke is drawn back into the door frame when one of the firefighters clutches the doorknob. His hand continues to ice, and the firefighters tear down the door, exposing a chamber filled with hundreds of frozen bodies and a phonograph playing a strange language. In the shadows, a mystery figure holds an orb harboring an ancient evil. As the orb opens, the corpses fracture, and a pair of eyeballs emerge from within. Present day, the Spenglers Callie, Carrie Coon, Phoebe, McKenna Grace, and Trevor, Finn Wolfhard, together with Mr. Gruberson, Paul Rudd, have relocated to Manhattan from Somerville to become full-time Ghostbusters. They're following a ghost named the Sewer Dragon through the streets. Trevor nearly snags it before it flies out of range, but Callie puts up a drone trap that captures the ghost, but Gruberson crashes into a rack of city bikes. The family encounters Walter Peck, William Atherton, the Ghostbusters' former foe who has now become mayor of New York City. He chastises them for not only continuing their job and causing harm to the city, but also for hiring Phoebe, who is still a child. The event also makes the headlines, casting an unfavorable light on the Ghostbusters once more. It is also revealed that, despite Gruberson's efforts to act as a surrogate father figure to Phoebe and Trevor now that he is dating Callie, Phoebe has yet to embrace him, but Callie does her best to support him. The Ghostbusters return to their headquarters, which is funded by Winston, Ernie Hudson. Janine, Annie Potts, visits them just as they are about to add the Sewer Dragon to their containment unit, which is nearly impossible because the unit has reached its maximum capacity. Meanwhile, Trevor notices green slime from above and decides to investigate a heap of junk food. He then encounters Slimer, who flies through Trevor and covers him in goo before disappearing. Ray, Dan Aykroyd, and podcast Logan Kim are now attempting to use relics from other customers to build a connection to the afterlife for their new web program. A lady gives Ray a watch from her late husband to try and read, but he gets nothing, so podcast smashes it with a hammer. They are visited by Nadim Razmadi, Kumail Nanjiani, who delivers them the identical orb they saw at the beginning. Ray attempts to use his PKE meter on it, but the energy emitted by the orb creates a spike, breaking the meter. When one of the chess pieces begins to move on its own, Phoebe is playing by herself in the park. Melody, Emily Allen Lind, a ghost girl who perished in a tenant fire, greets her and always has little flames. She admits to Phoebe that she isn't very optimistic about her chances of making the transition. Following their conversation, Melody is then observed wandering the streets by herself. She addresses a snarling voice and inquires as to whether Phoebe is truly the target of his scheme. After arriving at a ghost research center that Winston also funded, the family is employed by parapsychologist Lars Pinfield, James Acaster. Additionally employed there is Lucky, Celeste O'Connor, who reunites with Trevor. Lars observes that the other imprisoned ghosts in there have grown attracted to the orb when they deliver it. Later, as Lars attempts to remove the energy source from the sphere, the facility experiences a power spike, and as he reaches for the orb, his arm almost freezes off. Phoebe and Podcast answer a call for the Ghostbusters and head out to investigate. When they get to the diner, they discover Melody is the ghost causing trouble for the patrons. The podcast prepares to capture her, but Phoebe finds it difficult to do so. The group goes to Nadim's shop to get more details about the orb. According to a PKE meter, Nadim possesses spiritual energy. When Lars and Lucky take Nadim to see Venkman, Bill Murray, for additional investigation, it is revealed that Nadim possesses the capacity to control fire, which he uses to vent his resentment at Venkman. When Melody goes to the firehouse, Phoebe shows her around the building and the confinement unit while they continue their conversation. She becomes intrigued by the orb as well and detects an odd language emanating from it. 
Ray goes to the New York Public Library with Phoebe and Podcast to find out more about the origins of the orb. They are explained by Dr. Hubert Wartsky, Patton Oswalt, an expert they encounter. A strong being known as Garaka was enlisted centuries ago to aid a power-hungry monarch in his conquests. But Garaka had other ideas and intended to use his abilities to create a new Ice Age. Garaka's horns, which gave him his power, were stolen by a group of people known as the Fire Masters, Nadim's descendants, who used their abilities to imprison him inside the sphere. Garaka's release would give New York the Death Chill, a feeling derived from their fear. At that point, the sphere begins to speak in the same language as before. A ghost that escaped with podcast breaks loose in the library as the group is about to leave, compelling the three to pursue it. At one point, Ray even encounters the original library ghost from the previous film, and she still terrifies him. After that, the ghost leaves the building and takes possession of the Fortitude Lion statue outside the library. Just before the police arrive, Phoebe uses her proton pack to demolish it with a torrent of fire. Peck takes this as just one more justification for taking aim at the Ghostbusters and attempting to shut them down permanently. He has repossessed the firehouse's equipment and condemned the building. When Phoebe defies Peck, she is also taken into custody, and Ray is reprimanded by Winston for putting her and podcast in danger. Melody returns to Phoebe because she needs some alone time. Following more conversation, Phoebe chooses to adopt a technique that allows her and Melody to exist on the same physical level. She does this by having Phoebe divide her spirit from her body for a brief two minutes. When the process is successful and Phoebe turns into a ghost, Melody then makes her actual intentions clear. She works for Garaka, who wanted Phoebe to open the orb on her behalf because he couldn't utilize a ghost like her. In return, Phoebe helped Melody cross over to live with her family. When he speaks the spell while inside Phoebe's body, the demon spirit is brought back to life. While the rest of the crew tries to assist Phoebe, her spirit returns to her body. When Lucky attempts to shoot Garaka with a proton, he freezes and breaks the stream. Ray, Winston, Janine, and Callie assist Phoebe as they arrive. They understand that for Garaka's death chill scheme to work, he will attempt to release the other ghosts. Everything in the city begins to freeze over, creating hundreds of lethal icicles that almost kill individuals. After getting supplies from the research facility, everyone arrives before Venkman and Nadim enter the fray. Ray makes an effort to persuade Nadim to use his Firemaster skills to aid in the battle against Garaka. The possessed ghost reappears in the meantime and tries to use his proton pack to kill everyone, but Nadim uses his abilities to deflect the blast through the window. The ghost then takes possession of the pizza, which Slimer quickly eats. Phoebe lines her blaster with brass since it resembles the substance of the orb that can capture Garaka after Lucky informs her that conventional proton blasts won't be sufficient to defeat Garaka. The Ghostbusters' attempts to stop the demon ghost are ineffective because he has nearly all of them frozen in ice as he makes his way to the facility. Nadim attempted to utilize his fire skills on Garaka, but because he was using it so frequently for practice, he had run out of lighter fluid. Phoebe meets Melody downstairs. Melody regrets what she did, but Phoebe assures her that Garaka never would have assisted her in crossing over, as he had said, and that she was capable of doing it all along. When Phoebe confronts Garaka directly, her brass does manage to hit him, but he still manages to overwhelm her. After that, Melody lights a match for Nadim using her flame, enabling him to use his abilities to bend fire against Garaka. When Garaka opens the containment unit, all the ghosts the Ghostbusters have ever captured are released, but the crew is still free. But this also makes the original Ghostbusters realize that Garaka has created a larger containment unit and that if they work together, they can stop him. In addition to Nadim's firebending, the Ghostbusters unleash their proton blasts, which swiftly bring down and dehorn Garaka once more as he gets stuck. After bidding Phoebe farewell, 
Melody eventually crosses over as the ice outside starts to melt. When the Ghostbusters return, they find Peck and a group of applauding New Yorkers. He prepares to close them down once more, but the other residents coerce him into standing with them and considering them heroes because, without them, the city would be encased in three feet of ice. All Peck can do is adjust his tune. Slimer and the Sewer Dragon fly out of the facility and into the city a short while later. After Gruberson and the Spenglers get dressed, Phoebe addresses Gruberson as Dad, and they set off to bust more ghosts. The little stay puffed marshmallow men from the last film can be seen robbing an unsuspecting driver of a truck owned by the official stay puffed firm during the credits.